If you are wondering whether your brother, uncle, cousin, distant family member, or sister is a narcissist, or at the very least narcissistic, you are in the right place. I'm sort of an expert by experience, and here I can go over some personal examples and maybe my story can help you understand your relationship with your siblings. And um, let me be clear, these examples are not about any one person in my family specifically, but rather a compilation of people that I've known that can clearly illustrate what to look for in a narcissistic sibling or family member. Quick disclaimer, I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm not saying that I was perfect. I've probably made narcissistic mistakes too, as I was learning and growing. But in this video, I'm simply trying to bring attention to and identify the signs and problems of having a narcissistic sibling because that goes a little beyond um, not being the perfect sibling or family member. Um, and it goes beyond learning your lesson because they never learn. So um, this can be a constant point of conflict and stress that can actually cause permanent damage or even completely break a relationship in a family. So number one, they claim that you never did anything at all for them. So they don't owe you a thing. Now, I'm not saying I'm in the habit of telling anyone that they owe me anything in this life, but this is something that this family member in particular would often use as an excuse whenever I asked them for favors. Um, she or he would say, you never do anything for me, so why should I do this for you? Uh, first of all, that's like assuming that our whole relationship is transactional. So the only things we do is, you know, you do something for me, I do something for you. But even if that concern was valid and they really thought that somehow like I never been there for her or never done anything for them, um, that was just not true. Like after growing up with somebody for so long and just knowing them your entire life, there's no way you could never do anything nice for them. So I realize it's not normal for someone in your family to have like no recollection whatsoever of anything positive that happened between you two and only remember the mistakes that you made. And I feel like they do this for a very specific purpose to manipulate you into feeling guilty and continuing to do nice things over and over for them no matter what to kind of prove that hey, you are a good person and you do do things for them. And you know what? Were there things, more things that I could have done? Sure. Were there bad things that I did? Sure. And I remember them because I did make mistakes, like I said, and I felt horrible about them. And I apologized over and over. And most importantly, I changed my behavior um, since then. But Again, it's weird for somebody to only recall the mistakes and the bad things you've done. Number two, and this is a big one, the family member or sister consistently demeans you, puts you down, or tries to make herself feel better than you. And this typically comes from a narcissist's fragile self-esteem because they do have a very insecure self-esteem, believe it or not. And when they feel like their identity or self-esteem is being attacked or challenged, they need to fight back to either bring the other person down a level or bring themselves up or both. And a clear example of this was when I, I for example, was casually seeing, seeing someone in college. We were talking, as they say. And then I decided to go on a cruise with this family member. Um, and I want to be clear that like the college guy and I were just talking like nothing was official at this point. We were not exclusive yet. So I went on the cruise and I kissed a guy. I kissed a random guy. It happened. And then when we came back, my sister told the guy that I was seeing that I had kissed someone and that apparently I cheated like that was cheating. Um, and it just was really unnecessary to say it wasn't any of their business and it just made me look bad. So, I mean, my theory is that this person was jealous in some way of the attention that I was getting from both guys and they just had to ruin this for me to put me down. 
Um, but again, it was just an attempt to like bring me down a level. And to this day, um, this particular family member continues to say demeaning comments here and there, maybe not to this extent, uh, of putting me down, but if I share an accomplishment or say something cool that I did recently, like I went to the park, I don't know, they, the response would be something like, that's cool, I guess, but you could also do this and like suggest a better example, suggest a better thing to do. Like it, it's just, they have to one up you somehow. Number three, they have very low empathy for everyone else but themselves. Um, Another personal example of my college days, when I went to visit this family member by bus, um, I told her that my boyfriend at the time was coming with me, um, but he was gonna be with his friends and I was gonna be staying with my sister or them. And she was fine with this. But then uh, we started hanging out with her or their best friend. And the best friend and I started joking around and we were just messing with her as people do who love you. They tease you sometimes. And, and and we were laughing at the funniest things. We were just saying that this person was very like, they just very intense that they take, they need to take it down a level, take it down a notch, but that's it, nothing offensive. And since this was the person's best friend, the sister's best friend, I thought, well, it can't be that bad what we're saying since her best friend is laughing too. And then she got really offended. I just remember her getting up and leaving and calling somebody else in the family and saying that I was talking bad about her and that was being a horrible person. So she kicked me out of her apartment for the night when I went to visit her. And by the, by the way, like I went to visit her by bus, not by car. I couldn't just drive back and I had no place to stay. Like there was no hotel, nothing. Um, just because, um, there was like some football game and, and I couldn't get a room anywhere. So she really didn't care what happened to me as long as like I was out of her sight, out of mind and unable to attack her self-esteem. But thank God I was able to stay with my boyfriend that night and his random friends. Okay, that's a different angle. All right. Uh, number four, um, they don't really respect boundaries. So no, like no matter how old they get, they don't learn. So for instance, in my case, when I was getting married, and I wanted my wedding dress picture to be a secret. I wanted it to be private so it could be a surprise at my wedding. Um, also, if you've seen my other videos, then you know that I have some people in my life who tried to steal my whole identity. Watch narcissistic identity theft, because that's a real thing. And so I was scared of being copied. Um, so what did my family member do? Or in this case, the sister? Um, she or they sent a picture of my wedding dress to the exact person that I talked about on my other video, the narcissistic identity theft one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who basically tried to hijack or steal my whole life and personality and made me feel really unsafe. This was a clear disrespect of my boundaries is that they will gaslight you constantly. So an example of this is like, for instance, if you're struggling with mental health issues like me, um, I've been told by certain fa family people that, um, you know, that I shouldn't take medication for mental health issues because, you know, like things like depression um, don't really exist. Everybody has depression. So in fact, Depression can be beaten with just the right positive attitude. So gaslighting kind of ties into this one, number six. Narcissists never take accountability, or very rarely at least. Uh, for example, even if this family member or sister is a narcissist and they really hurt you, they really hurt your feelings, um, you're not gonna get um, like a real apology or acknowledgement of what even happened. So the most that I got was basically that person telling me what I was heard about didn't happen the way I remember it, which is gaslighting. But also if it, if my feelings were hurt, like if, if my feelings happen to be hurt about that still, 
it's over now. So I just need to let it go and get over it because I was basically overreacting. So that's the closest that that person has ever come to saying sorry or saying that they did something wrong is basically, quote, if I did something to hurt your feelings, you need to get over it by now. And finally, number seven. Um, I can't hold up both my hands because I'm holding my phone with the other one. So, <laughs> so number seven on the list of like how to tell if your sister or sibling or family member is a narcissist is that they will at some point devalue you. So just like a typical narcissist would do in a romantic relationship, because that's a different scenario and we're talking about family relationships. In a romantic relationship, the narcissist typically, you know, love bombs and then devalues and discards their partner or victim. But, um, and then here love bombing, if you don't know it means showing you constant love and attention to make you feel really good about yourself. And then later they, they devalue you and then they dump you. Um, and they do this in theory to get narcissistic supply and, and feel good about themselves. Um, so according to Wikipedia, in psychoanalytic theory, narcissistic supply is a pathological or excessive need for attention or admiration from codependence, if you wanted that definition. But when it comes to siblings or family members, it's possible that you were a consistent source of narcissistic supply. And then, especially if you're dealing with like an older member that you admired or showed like a lot of admiration, um, maybe that really fed their ego and their supply. So they kept love bombing you. But once you grew up and you finally started to realize the little cracks and tears and their flaws here and there, you stopped putting them on a pedestal and that's when they stopped showing you like that love and attention that you used to get. So they started devaluing you. Um, what can that look like in a family unit? Well, because they're not your romantic partner, right? They're your family. Well, it can look like forgetting to invite you to family gatherings or events, um, forgetting to include you in like family photo shoots or pictures or stuff like that, ignoring you, you're ignoring your messages, avoiding you at events, just not treating you the same as before. Like you can tell that something's different, um, that they are kind of mad at you, but they don't know why or they can't tell you why. Um, and, and honestly, sometimes even the very things that they loved about you in the love bombing phase are the things that they'll criticize about you now when they're devaluing you. And so, like, for example, in my experience, I had a family member tell me that they admired me for being so innocent and nice. Um, but then they told me that actually they don't like that I'm innocent because that's kind of immature. So <laughs> those are the top seven things that I have learned personally um, by dealing with a lot of narcissistic people that you can find in somebody who is not a partner, especially in, as like a family member. So hopefully these clear and vivid stories can help you determine whether your brother, uncle, family member, distant cousin, or sister is a narcissist. And I will cite the sources that I used in my video below. Also the link to my other video about narcissists, which should, you should check it out. Um, about narcissistic identity theft. Thanks for watching.